Hello everyone and welcome back to Learning with Jelly. So today we're on video three of our Git and GitHub series and helping you get Git. And we're gonna talk about how we can connect a local repo to GitHub. So what's on our agenda for today is gonna be just that. So before we actually create a GitHub repository so that we're able to connect what we locally have on our computer to GitHub itself, let me walk you through what we did in the previous video. So I'm just going to bring up my terminal here so we see exactly what we have done. So in the previous video, we ended up making a folder called repo underscore projects. We ended up navigating inside that folder doing a CD. We then turned that folder into an empty Git repository doing Git init. And then we created a readme file using the touch command. So anytime you want to create a text file, a code file, whatever file you want to create, you can do that by doing touch. And then when we ran a git status, we see that that readme file is actually here untracked. Our goal is to now connect this folder on our computer locally to a remote repository on GitHub that will be housed on the internet. Okay, so let's go ahead. I have some written steps in this deck on how you can create a new repo, but I'm just gonna walk you through that. So in this case, I'm going to go and hit new repository. And within this new repository, I'm gonna have a Spratly and how I did that, which is clicking the plus sign in the new repository. Make sure that you click your username as the owner, if you have more than one. And I'm gonna name this repository my underscore first project. I'm not going to add a description. I'm gonna make it public because it's just a basic um, repo. If you are doing this in industry, maybe it'll be private. And that means you have to invite people to the repository. And then I'm just gonna hit create. When I do this, it brings me to this screen where it says I can either create a new repo on the command line or I can push an existing repo from the command line. We're actually going to talk about the first box later on, but since we already have an existing repo on our computer, we're just going to connect our existing repo to GitHub via the terminal. So let's go ahead and bring up the terminal. And we're going to follow these steps, except for the last one. We're gonna do the last one, but it's gonna come after we go ahead and deal with our readme file. So in this case, the first thing that it tells me to do, it wants me to do git remote add origin, and it wants me to copy this URL. So let me go ahead and copy this, and then I'm going to paste it. So basically what this is saying is, please add this URL as my remote repo for this folder because remote means in the cloud. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter. After that, I'm gonna do a git branch dash M main. And now since I already have a readme, before I push anything to this remote repository on the internet, I'm going to want to add the file, also called staging, and I'm going to want to commit the file, and then I'm going to want to push. And if you remember those three things in that order, you're gonna be good to go. We're gonna practice this a lot. So in this case, up here, if we look back, we see that we have untracked files, one being readme. It says, use git add in the file name to actually stage and track this file. So I'm going to do git add, and I'm gonna put in that readme. And after I do a git add, I'm gonna do what we call a git commit. And that's gonna be git commit dash M, and in quotes, it's going to be a message, right? These messages should be descriptive because when you want to go back to a commit, you want to know what you have already done. So in this case, I'm gonna say initial commit adds reading. 
That way I know that this is my first commit and my first commit is adding this readme. And then there it says, it says one file change. So now since I did a git add and git commit, now I'm gonna wanna do this git push that we see here. So we have git push dash u origin main, upstream origin main. So I'm gonna do git push dash u origin main. Okay. And soon as I do that, I see that it wrote some things and it looks like uh, main set up track remote branch main from origin. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So now when I do a get status here, it says your branch is up to date. So if I go back to GitHub and scroll up and I do my first project, I see that readme that I just added right now. Okay, so now I have a connection between my local repo and one that's actually on the internet, okay? So let's go back to our actual deck here. And I'm going to make this bigger so we can continue to present. So here we were able to connect our first repo and follow all those prompts. Keep in mind, get remote at origin is which the URL of the remote repository that you want to link to your local repository. There are some git commands that you should know that are very common. So as I mentioned, git status is one of those. When you have no idea what's going on in your repo, do a git status. It's going to tell you if there are untracked files and just like we saw in the terminal, it told us what to do. Do a git add, right? There is also gonna be git init. You want to initialize a repo locally. We're gonna talk about git pull, but we just did a git push. That means when you wanna push whatever you're doing locally to the remote repo, and we just pushed up our readme, there's gonna be a git diff so we can see any differences. We're also gonna talk about git revert so that you can go back to a different version. So there's tons of git commands. We possibly will not go through all of them in this playlist, but feel free to Google any of these commands. So steps, just to remind you for starting a local, then remote, because you definitely can do remote first, then local. You want to create a folder on your computer. You want to initialize it as a Git repo doing Git init. You can use the touch command to make any file you want. I make a markdown files or a text file or a coding file. You then want to create that repo on GitHub. Follow the second box of code to connect repo to your local one. And then you want to make sure you know git add, git commit, git push. Git commit will always be a descriptive message of what you are changing, what have you actually done. And there you have it, you all. Thank you for tuning in with Learning with Jelly. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and stay tuned for the fourth video.